The international talks underway to calm tensions in Ukraine didn't deter armed pro-Russian separatists who took over this Ukrainian TV control tower. They used it to tune into and transmit Russian TV stations in the Ukrainian city of Slavyansk. In the same city, another group of separatists continued their occupation of a local administration building. On the same day, the US, Ukraine, European Union and Russia reached agreement on calming tensions. A joint statement issued after talks in Geneva called on all sides to refrain from violence, intimidation and provocative action. But US Secretary of State John Kerry warned of more sanctions if Russia failed to act. We fully expect uh, the Russians, uh, as they said they would here today, to demonstrate their seriousness by insisting that pro-Russian separatists who they've been supporting lay down their arms, leave the buildings, and pursue their political objectives through the constitutional processes that the agreement guarantees. Russian's foreign minister said all sides had agreed to turn away from violence in the hope of de-escalating the crisis. And he said that despite President Vladimir Putin's assertions that Russia reserved a right to send its troops into Ukraine, it was not an option they wanted to use. We have no wish to put our armed forces in Ukraine on the territory of a friendly state on the territory where our brothers live. This goes against the core interests of the Russian Federation. Canada said it's sending six CF-18 fighter planes to the region to help bolster NATO. NATO's ruled out military involvement in Ukraine, but announced plans to send more ships, planes and troops to Eastern Europe to reassure other nations.